Hey traders, welcome to another video. We're going to be talking about something a little bit different in this one. We usually go through like a crypto market update or a global macro, but in this one, we'll be looking at some short squeezes, talking about things like GameStop, AMC, BlackBerry, which has absolutely mooned because uh, what a short squeeze is in short, <laughs> no pun intended, hedge funds are valuing a certain company, let's say GameStop, a lot lower than the current market value, let's say. How they could profit from this is they borrow shares from the exchange, sell it to the open market. That is their short position that is now opened. They owe that certain amount of shares back to the exchange, which they will pay for at a later point when they can buy it back when the price is lower because they are speculating and, and expecting that the price will drop because the value of their shares should, in their, in their minds, be worth less because the value of the company is not doing as well as it previously was. So what these retail traders at Wall Street Bets are doing is understanding that there, there are some companies within public exchanges and markets that are heavily shorted. You can actually get information on that. Um, the percent of the float that is short is what you'd be looking for as one of the indicators. And what these retail traders are doing is collectively buying up the price. So then companies like GameStop, AMC, Blackberries, prices move up so then at a certain point these hedge funds that are short these companies have to buy back in order to get out of the position so then the higher the price goes the higher or the more they have to pay in order to buy back the shares that they initially borrowed probably for a lot lower of the price that they're uh, currently having to pay in order to get out of the short position so they are in a little bit of a pickle let's say and these wall street bets uh, tr retail traders are really taking advantage, in my opinion, in a positive way because institutionals have been manipulating the market for as long as markets have been around, in my opinion. Um, if you have a lot of capital swinging around, you have the ability to manipulate markets. Retail traders, especially now because there's so much uh, discrepancy between people who don't have money, people do, rich versus poor, it's, it's very easy to manipulate the market if you're like, JP Morgan, for example. So seeing wins like this is huge. And I think it, create, it creates like a collective success in the eyes of these Wall Street bet uh, retail traders. And I think as that collective community grows and becomes stronger and actually profits from it, the A, they have more capital and B, they feel like they're in a sense of a community, which could be creating like a uh, tunnel or like a flow of capital into assets that are deemed to be short squeezable in some cases. Looking at the short float that is squeezed, looking at some other opportunities, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. But we see Melvin Capital, a hedge fund that was targeted by Reddit board, close out of GameStop short positions. And uh, they don't exactly say how much they lost, but Citadel and Point72, which are two obviously massive, huge institutions, have infused close to $3 billion into Melvin Capital to shore up its finances. Pretty unbelievable. And that is a huge win for these Wall Wall Street bet retail traders. And I think with that collective feeling of, yes, we are able to take down these huge conglomerates, these corporations, this is the next big opportunity for them. And we're going to talk about it because there are some ETFs that could actually do extremely well because this is something that is 100% valid from a fundamental standpoint. We can see just within the Reddit here, uh, JPM, JP Morgan was fined $900 million for market manipulation of silver, but have since long goal or since gone long silver, meaning they bought silver, expecting it's going to move to the upside, realizing they can no longer hold down the price. Now other banks are stuck holding massive short positions and they have no way of getting out, right? That is in theory what a short position is. And this isn't even talking about the currency proliferation that we're seeing with the US dollar and really all fiat currencies moving to the downside because there's so much stimulus. Interest rates are basically at 0%. It's very easy to obtain currency and, and money at this point um, through banks and other financial institutions. So we are living in a time where there is massive dovishness, similar to what we've had in the 40s, uh, coming into out of World War II in the late 40s, 50s, 60s. We had very low interest rates, lots of stimulus. America was looking great, but at the end of the day, they had to suffer the consequences of the late 70s where there was massive inflation. And I think that's where we're seeing 
that's where we're heading to right now is we're in not even the feel good period, but a moment in time where we are able to print value and it can't last forever. And we are entering a phase where there is going to be a massive shock and there is going to be significant inflation. And we're going to be looking at the CPI numbers, which are the consumer price index numbers globally to understand where the inflation truly is. But we can see that there is an opportunity in silver. We've been talking about it from a fundamental standpoint as well as a technical standpoint. But in this video, we are now going to enter the second half where we're going to look at some charts. Hopefully you have a good understanding of why these traders from Wall Street Bets are looking at silver and they probably are going to be carrying the profits from GameStop, Bed Bath & Beyond, Nokia um, and all these different companies, AMC that they've profited off of and then potentially incorporating it into these ETFs that they're going to be looking at. So without further ado, let's now look at some ETFs that uh, people are looking at. So within the actual post here, let's just <clears throat> quickly take a look. I'm going to get a little bit of water. All right, so this person, individual who posted, he is going to SLV. So I believe it's SLV is this one right here. I think this is one of the better technical uh, structures that we currently see right now. Within the four different ETFs that we're going to be looking at, this is SLV on the bottom right hand corner. At the top right hand corner, we have SI. VR and then on the bottom left we have SILJ and then SIL on the top left here. So we're, let's first talk about SLV. Just from a technical standpoint, we're not really going to get into the fundamentals in this video here. So let's just take a quick look at the monthly chart. It looks very similar to the chart of silver. Um, we see that nice long consolidation with that zone right at $14, basically exactly the same as silver. We're just going to be talking about the same thing and then we see if we are looking at this zone right around here, maybe on the weekly or monthly, that show a little bit differently. Maybe it's a little bit longer of a zone, somewhere around there, around the $20 range. So let's take a quick picture and talk about this on a large time frame, and then slowly work our way down. So this is the massive bull market. We had the triangle right here, the consolidation, and then we had the bear market right here. So that was from 2013 all the way until where we currently broke the $20 range. And I think that's where we start. That's where we are starting our bull market from here. So we had this long consolidation, extremely long bear market for silver. And this is where these uh, Wall Street bet people are saying there was a lot of market manipulation with institutions and huge banks suppressing the price of silver and shorting it heavily. So then it is kept within this box and then we're seeing this box break out, not be able to hold. And for every single person or fund who's shorted within the last, let's say, um, six years are now underwater because they've had to get in somewhere in here, right? Within the last six years, you, can, you can't be positive short on this chart. Um, so as the price continues to go up, there's going to be less and less people who are positive with the short on silver or SLV, I believe this one, SLV, yeah. So then at a certain point, they're gonna have to buy in, similar to the short positions that we're seeing. So then we've got our first massive impulsive push to the upside, huge volume coming in. We saw our pullback validating this previous major level of resistance as well as support here as a new level of sensitivity. And then when we are looking at the daily chart, uh, it doesn't look absolutely beautiful. I think the two day represents it a little bit more. Let's take a look right here. We saw the nice contraction and consolidation. This is our impulsive push. We were able to get a series of lower highs and then a horizontal level of support to hold. This is our contraction where the volatility is contracting within the resistance here and the support. And then we got our first impulsive push. We're getting the pullback to validate this previous resistance right here as a new level of support, which we are. We're seeing that higher low form, the shift in market structure. So we are now, in my opinion, going into a phase where we're breaking market structure from a consolidation into a potential breakout. So in my opinion, we are going to be moving to the upside just from a technical standpoint because we've already broken and validated the previous zone of confluence, which was this zone right here. That was the major level that I wanted to keep an eye on for the price of silver. And now that we've broken above it, this was the impulsive 
push breaking this major zone for the bears and now we validated as a new level of support right here and we already see buy injections coming into the market so from a technical standpoint this does look bullish it does look like the buyers are taking control of the market and taking really confidence from the bears or the sellers so uh, it's been a little bit sturdy of a, of a time for silver especially just looking at the asset itself there's been a couple uh, cases where it broke to the upside and then came back down leaving anyone who bought at the breakout to be really heavily underwater or just close their position but i think at the second time go we could see a nice move to the upside because we're already seeing uh, sound money assets like crypto btc especially do extremely well the us dollar is plummeting which is a negatively correlated asset compared to things like gold silver and btc and we actually will look at the us dollar a little bit later in the video but let's just uh, continue with the etfs here so in short i think that's what we're going to be looking at here 23 dollars is going to be a major level of support that we're going to be looking at which is in confluence with this zone so i expect it to continue to the upside so on the six hour chart pretty choppy i must say just going to be looking at a potential mid-level zone that we're seeing right here yeah so i'd say uh, an opportunity if we're just looking at a potential trade you could go either way you could do break of this high or you could do a mid-level zone so you're entering here and then you see this series of higher lows right here so once it breaks this low then you could definitely be in a little bit of a worry because you've already broken this market structure we can see let's just get a little bit of water you can see this zone support resistance boom 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 very significant level and now it's holding that zone and then we see within this zone we have a nice tight contraction right here which is going to be the battle area lots of buyers lots of sellers and once we've broken out that's the direction that we're going to be playing off of because when we're looking at the large time frame that's the that's the macro direction that we want to be trading in no point shorting so that's going to be the possible stop loss below this low right here we've already broken out of this consolidation which is in our eyes the higher low and then we're going to be creating a higher high and then even if that higher low comes in we've already got the entry and the stop loss basically maybe to the to the entry point uh, at least some level of risk that is reduced and taken off the table but uh, that is going to be the overall trade that we're going to be looking for and then when you are looking at moves to the upside obviously it does depend on um, what you're looking for in terms of uh, like an investment or trade um, we're not going to be it's it's pretty hard to explain exactly how every single person should be holding every single asset so that's going to be the entry that we're going to be looking at in terms of market structure it does look pretty good already i'd say slv and then we're, we're going to talk about next is probably the best bets in terms of the technical standpoint and the reason is they've been able to hold major levels and once they've broken up they've held that higher low and what do I mean by that? Let's just take an example at the next one that we're going to be looking at is SIVR. Same, similar type of market structure, right? Where we see that break in the level of confluence, which is right here, which is the descending zone and the horizontal zone and, uh, intersecting at a certain point. And we can see the exact same thing. We saw that nice push to the upside. We're getting the pullback to validate that previous zone of confluence, the previous zone of sensitivity previous support previous resistance now it's acting as a nice support again really nice market structure that we're seeing for both slv as well as sivr so those are the two that in my opinion have relative strength when you are looking at these different etfs for silver miners we're gonna we're now going to be looking at some of the less uh, relatively strong or like relatively weak etf that we're looking at and why this one is relatively weak we saw that nice push to the upside that impulsive push we saw the higher low hold right in this case we're not seeing the higher low hold we saw a push to the upside for sil and then we saw it pull back all the way even below the zone of confluence where we see right here that's where the other uh charts like sivr and slv are holding right around here right where you see the zone of confluence the descending zone the horizontal zone uh, turning into a previous support new level of resistance and then it breaks up and then you hold right here that's what we're seeing on these two other charts and that's why they're relatively strong same thing was uh, same thing with slij which is the junior uh, junior uh, uh, silver miner shares compared to sil so this is going to be a lot more volatile compared to sil so 
good on the upside, not great on the downside. Definitely gotta manage your risk, but if you are looking at the metals market in a bull market, these juniors are gonna be absolutely mooning, in my opinion. So a little bit of speculation in a bull market is not a bad thing. It's kind of similar to picking a very small alt within a crypto bull market. It could do 5X, 10X, um, or even more, right? So you gotta look at the opportunities and the risk reward there is pretty phenomenal. So why we're not really looking at these ones as much is mainly the technicals, right? You look at the, if you are trading large size, the amount of shares that are being traded in a certain day. So then you have, uh, you have the volume and you have the liquidity to actually get in and out if you are trading uh, large sums of capital. But um, I would say from a technical standpoint, SIVR and SLV are definitely the better bets because we do see the fundamental uh, f f factors of the technicals just being a lot more relatively strong, right? We're seeing that higher low. We're seeing buyers en enter the market when buyers wouldn't en enter the market on SIL and SILJ. So there's already indications that there is an interest from the overall marketplace that these are gonna be the, the assets and the ETFs that are gonna be getting more of the love that could be front running the overall silver market. So that's gonna be the video for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and girls enjoyed it. If you did find it useful, definitely please give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy our videos and like understanding technicals, like getting into different things, we usually talk about crypto, um, but you know, definitely get to switch it up. Uh, some pretty some pretty crazy stuff happening out in the world in terms of stock markets and stuff but we are going to end the video with this chart right here this is the gold and silver ratio and what we are looking for is the gold and silver ratio to absolutely plummet and we see back in like 2010 2011 when silver is really really moving um let's just take a look at slv i believe that has yeah dates back really far 2010 and then the first half of 2011 and then May in 2011 is when it starts to really correct and move to the downside. But when we're looking at the gold and silver ratio, when is silver absolutely ballooning? Like this is going from $20 to $46 in a span of like, uh, let's say under a year, pretty unbelievable. So when we are looking at the move here. That's what we're looking for ideally is for silver to be appreciating at a greater rate than gold. And we're gonna be looking at gold because yes, it is the main asset within the precious metal sector, but when there is a bull market like we're seeing in gold right now, gold recently broke into an all-time high. Yes, it's pulling back. Yes, it's not as buoyant as let's say cryptocurrencies right now because it's not getting as much love. But in my opinion, the overall macro direction for gold and silver is definitely still to the upside. And we've just come out of the five-year bull or five-year bear market. When we are looking at gold, silver, we've consolidated since 2013, 20, later 2011, until now really, when we started really breaking to the upside. Gold already started. Once it broke $1,400, we saw a huge continuation for gold to break up to the all-time high. Right now, I think it's silver's turn because we've already seen that huge push in gold. People are speculating. There's already money in the market. There's stimulus. It's already a precious metals bull market. And I think that a lot of the love is going towards the more speculative assets. And in the sound money, uh, precious metals world, the more speculative asset is going to be silver. So I think that's where a lot of the love is going. So um, we will keep everyone updated. We've been talking about gold for a while as well as silver for a while. Um, I think it is a uh, asset class that is not talked about enough, especially nowadays where there's a lot of currency proliferation, not just central banks um, in like the first world countries, but central banks around the world are printing a tremendous amount of money. And I think that something like the late seventies in the United States could occur to the entire world really um, because we're so globalized. Um, so it'd be an interesting time. So sound money is something that we're heavily, heavily focused in. And I think that silver could be a really good opportunity and not just because of the Wall Street bets thing, but um, I'm not complaining. I've been definitely investing in silver and I see the opportunity. So the fact that they are potentially going to disrupt the market and force institutions that have billions in short positions to all close them, AKA buy back the shares that they shorted, could mean a massive opportunity for everyday retail traders. So 
Hopefully you got some value from this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. And until next time, have a good one, traders.